Hello, welcome and welcome back. This is Jacob and today we are going to be continuing the narration and character voice acting for the side story Gaviel the Great Chief Returns. And as always, considering this is part 2, uh, timestamps are in the comment section below if you want to skip this intro. And uh, we're going to do the quick recap, of course, here uh, of part number 1. And for anybody new to both the channel and this narration series, uh, the playlist for this entire thing is in the description of the video right at the top, so you cannot miss it. And uh, yeah, enjoy! And of course, as always, thank you very much for uh, all the likes and the comments as well, of course, on the previous episode for this. Uh, thank you very much, they do both mean a lot and they do help a lot in the uh, algorithm battle, so uh, thank you for helping out with the videos. Alright, but let's begin with the quick recap. So. On the previous part, we began our story with um, with a crash and the Doctor waking up from a daze or uh, a deep sleep in which the Doctor once again, well, talks to something, <laughs> apparently for a while, before waking up, be it to themselves or something else, who the hell knows, but uh, the Doctor wakes up to the sight of Gaviel and Kyobi uh, watching over them as they wake up. They quickly learn about the situation that the aircraft that they were on uh, got hit by something and that they crashed. Several party members that were with them have already jumped out of the plane before it uh, hit the ground, but the plane is close by, so the three of them decide to go over to it to check out what is happening. As they're heading over, they spot very, very quickly that the plane is being surrounded by Akahualan residents and they fight them off, only to discover after talking to Lanza 2 and Dylan, uh, who is unconscious from the crash, or rather, sorry, not from the crash, but from the fight with the Akahualans, uh, that the engine of the aircraft has been stolen, and precisely only the engine. They quickly get also uh, a new visitor to the site, which is Tomimi, a old friend of Gaviel's, who quickly rushes in, uh, greeting Gaviel, and gets introduced to the group. The group then decides to split into two teams. Uh, Lancet, uh, Lancet 2 and uh, Dylan will stay behind, Dylan the pilot by the way, will stay behind uh, with the aircraft uh, and conduct repairs. At least Dylan will as soon as he wakes up. Uh, Tomimi gets asked to help uh, with the transport of the aircraft to the uh, village of uh, Tomimi's. And uh, the group of uh, Tomimi, the doctor, uh, Gaviel and uh, K.O.B. decide to go on foot into the jungle to uh, get to the venue where the great uh, great chief uh, selection is being held. But on the way there, K decides to join some mushrooms, get on a trip, and uh, go and play K.O.B.'s Fungi Mist by herself, apparently. And she's off. Also on the way, Tomimi starts to explain to uh, the Doctor, essentially, what, uh, or rather, how the situation is in the jungle, the different tribes, the Great Chief Tournament, and uh, what is up with all of that. However, Gaviel uh, gets also distracted very quickly by a very interesting argument along the trip. And that is between two individuals who start arguing between the age-old question, the very important thing, and I don't mean that sarcastically, it is a very <laughs> important thing. Do you like thin or thick? Anyway, battle ensues. And after that little uh, oopsie-daisy, the group finally reaches the great venue, in which uh, we quickly discover that the members of the uh, rock band Aus, or Alive Until Sunset, as the full name is, have been in the jungle actually performing there at the same uh, venue where, where the now Great Chief uh, selection is being held some time ago. And they left behind quite a lot of equipment after their concerts in the jungle were done, including some of their music tracks. And now everybody is just vibing to it and using the same music for the tournament. And while uh, the ceremony is going on, Tomimi and the Doctor share a bit of a moment discussing Gaviel, and uh, Tomimi shares a bit of the past of Gaviel and how it was uh, before, when they were younger, and how Gaviel almost became Great Chief already at a very young age. 
But then and there, uh, Kyobi bumps into the venue and pretty much knocks everybody out. And as she succeeds so, we do also see that she's still in her, as Gabriel likes to call it, the La La Land, and she rushes off back into the jungle. Uh, Gabriel tries to rush after her to stop her in her tracks, but never manages to catch up to her and has to reluctantly return to the group. But she returns back just in time to see Zumama, uh, aka Unectus, approach uh, the venue and start participating in the battle. Uh, after seeing how powerful Zumama has become as a fighter, Gabriel gets uh, very very antsy and wants to go down to fight her, and she proceeds to do so. However, unbeknownst to uh, Gaviel, as she approaches Zumama and declares uh, a fight between the two of them, Zumama calls to the High Priest and uh, the, to, to deploy the big ugly thing and uh, pretty much bombard the entire area with uh, a cannon barrage, which promptly happens and uh, that is where we left off. So now, we shall continue. So then, in today's part, we shall be including everything from the cutscene-only part on stage ST1, uh, stage 5, stage 6, and the cutscene on stage ST2. And at the end, we will include another character, uh, full file and voice files. This time around, it will be the file, file and voice files for Unectus. I wanted to actually include Tomimi in this uh, second part and leave Unectus for the finale, but after reading Tomimi's file, I was like, yeah, her file is kind of better to read at the final one. You'll see what I mean by that when we get to the final part of this narration if you're following blindly through this thing. But anyway, let us begin. Uh, pardon? Let us begin with uh, SD 1, titled Titan's Heart. Being straightforward has never meant being reckless. <sighs> ah, that hurts a little. Gabriel, you're awake. Uh, are you okay? I'm fine, just a scratch. More importantly, is that the machines Mama's been tinkering with all this time? Yes, I heard them calling it the big ugly thing. So gross. It's pretty badass. So, uh, uh, uh huh? Uh, but the big thing definitely beat you down. I can tell it's really tough, even though it knocked my lights out before I got a good look at it. Hmm, yes it is. But I never imagined she'd actually put together something like this. Closure makes some weird gadgets every once in a while, but yeah, but even she'd be impressed with Zumama's machine here. <laughs> wow, are there lots of things like that at Rhode Island? Yes. Not that ugly. <laughs> now that you mention it, that thing would drive Closure up the wall as soon as she laid eyes on it. Hmm? What happened to the temple? That monster blew it up. Oh, so that means the ceremony's over. Yes. And so Zumama's the great chief now. Yes. Everyone was pretty shocked at first, but... Why did I destroy the temple? It's simple. It's my way of telling you all we're ending this tradition. With your fists you can beat down ten men. If you're Gabriel, maybe you can take a hundred, but more than that, even Gabriel couldn't manage. And there's a limit to what you can do with your fists. But with a tool? That's different. My trap created this big ugly thing that effortlessly took down Gabriel and destroyed the temple just as easily. This is the power of a tool. Tools can make you all even stronger. And so I hereby proclaim the Age of Machines. Everyone bought into it, so... So she became a, the Great Chief. Huh. Well, that's an L for me, obviously. Are you okay with that? Huh? Uh, yeah. A loss is a loss. 
Oh, but I have to apologize to Tamimi. It's my fault you never got a chance to fight. <laughs> that That's okay. Even if I went up there, I wouldn't have changed anything. Yeah, you're right about that one. Hey, Doctor, what do we do now? Find the engine and the others. Ah, right, we need the engine to get back. And as for the others, if we didn't see them at the ceremony, maybe they got lost? Um, well... Huh? Those two over there... Hey, Yoda, are you okay? Yeah, it's just... it's kinda... Yoda! I need a shaman! Hey, let me take a look. Gabriel, you're alive. Takes more than that to kill me. Shut up for now. Lay your brother out and I'll look him over. Tommy, me, get my medical bag. Oh, okay. Is he gonna be alright? He's not dead, but he's not looking good either. Shortness of breath, foamy, bloody, spittle. Hmm? And a regenium crystal on the body? Doctor, my initial diagnosis is heart failure brought on by aripathy. What? It's stone disease. The symptoms aren't too bad. I have some emergency medicine in my bag, but we need to treat him right away. Stand him up. He can't lie down. I'll give him some oxygen. The stone disease did this? Ugh. I told him not to push it. Hmm. Hey. What's your name? I'm Yogi. Uh, that's my brother Yoda. Which tribe? Unectus. <laughs> What's wrong, Gabriel? Your face is scaring me. Not now. I'm asking again. Did the mama send you into the mines to get ore for her big metal monster? Yes. Why? <laughs> I'm sorry, Doctor. No matter what, I have to pay Zumama a visit. Because of the stone disease? Nothing gets past you, Doctor. Our tribes don't have much contact with the outside world. To you and other operators, we're a primitive backwater. But there is one good thing about this place. You heard it, right? They call aripathy stone disease and treat it like an ordinary malady. Sometimes people catch it, sometimes they die of it, but nobody thinks it's anything special, because people here die from lots of things. Everyone looks after aripathy patients like they're just regular sick people. All they know about the disease is you can catch it in the mines. So very few people get into the mines. It's been that way for a long time. Your aripathy... Kavya caught it when she... Saved me. Yeah. When Tamimi was little, she snuck into the depths of the mines. I went to rescue her, and I got sick. Lucky she didn't. If only I got it instead. Don't you dare say that. Getting sick is a terrible thing. It's just bad luck. <laughs> so they really orchestrated you out of here? You've asked her a couple of times, Doctor. After I got sick, the other tra traps people wouldn't let me do anything. I, I couldn't hunt, I couldn't even go to a gathering. And a little run to Mimi here was the worst. She came over from her tribe and stuck to me like glue. She did everything for me and I had nothing to do. In the end, they wouldn't even let me join the ceremony. Day after day, time after time, it was, oh no, Gabriel, let me do that for you. You know what I mean? It's no life for me. Gabriel didn't smile much after that. I was so pissed off. I went to the ceremony anyway and beat the tar out of everyone I saw on the way. I shouldn't have been so pushy, Gabriel. That really is a kind of ostracization. The reality is around here, if you can't fight, you're nothing. A waste of space. I'd rather you let me put myself in danger than take away my freedom to do anything. Hey, you got me off on a tangent there. This isn't what I wanted to talk about. Mm, what was I saying? 
about the cash you owe me? Bullshit. Shit. It was worth a try. What was that? Oh, I got it. I was thinking about how that great big monster of a machine must have taken a ton of iron ore to build. Put that together with the mama, what the mama was saying. And we know she definitely sent her people down into the mines to get that ore. Now that you mention it, I have heard something like that. No, I've got no problem with that of, on its face. If she just had the digging, if she just had them digging around on the outside, no big deal. But now people are getting sick, and I have to do something. I don't care about her age of machines or whatever. If she's throwing awa away lives, she's earned a clobbering. Well, you have my full support. Thanks, Doctor. Gavio. <laughs> Tell Mimi, where is Umama's tribe? Um, I don't know. Hey, Gabriel, I'm really not interested in your hopes and dreams and ideals here. What's up with your bro with my brother? Huh? You can understand our Sargonian. Yes, the leader taught all of us. What is it Zumama up to? Whatever. Anyway, Tell Mimi, get your minions to carry this one back to your tribe. Have Lance and two start treating him. Hey, what are you doing? If you want your brother to live, you'll put your trust in me. Okay then, I'll take him back with me. Oh, you're not coming with me? Ah, uh, uh, no, of course I want to go with you, Gabriel, but I have a few things that need doing first. I'll catch up with you later. What things? Need my help? N n n no, uh, I can take care of it myself. Gabriel, do you remember the Great Waterfall? We'll meet up there. Okay. Alright. You were the one and only Gabriel, I trust you. But I'm going with. No, you won't be any help. And there's something I need you to do for me. What? Go tell Zumama we need to have a talk. Alright, and let us continue on to stage 5, titled Individual Strengths. Knowing a skill is very important. Doctor, we're pretty deep in the rainforest now. It's a lot more humid here, and the trees get way denser too. Watch your footing, don't trip. There's a tribe up ahead. Let's go take a look. <sighs> it's so boring here. I'm gonna take a nap. Inam! Gavio, I heard you fought Zumama at the festival and got your ass handed to you. What are you doing here? Well, new sure gets to you fast, Inam. I gotta say, I thought the Mimi was pulling my leg when she said you're a tribal leader now. But here you are! It wasn't my decision. What can I do if they all want to follow me? So, why didn't you come to the ceremony? Doctor, this is Inam, the girl Tamimi mentioned before. Hello. Whoa, a real life outsider. Hmm? Inam, how come you know Sargonian too? Well, officially, I'm the messenger for these parts here. Messenger? Huh. You... Whatever. I can tell you at least know what the messenger is. Not like the boneheads here. Even if I told them, they wouldn't have any idea what it actually means. Wait up, when did you become a messenger? I've always been a messenger. We're still technically within Sargon territory. You can't possibly think they know absolutely nothing about this whole area. Huh. They don't, though. Of course not. As far as I know, a couple of centuries ago, this actually used to be a Sargon mining colony. When a catastrophe happened, the whole nomadic city moved away, and they ended up abandoning the mine. The people who got left behind, and the ones who came back later, are our ancestors here. And I guess the higher-ups out there are thinking about repositioning those newer cities here to start putting the mine to use again. Like that time ten years ago. You know the one. Oh, 
Oh, you mean that one time? Well, the mom and I saw it. That's also the day she started acting really strange. Oh, yeah? Well, I don't really know why they gave up on the idea. They probably had someone survey the area and realized the mine didn't have much value at all. If they did park a city here, it's gonna end up pretty far away from all the other ones. I heard this stretch of no man's land used to be a pretty prosperous place. No idea how long ago, though. Well, whatever. Let's talk about something else. I mean, I was like, um... How old was I again? Oh, whatever. They sent me here after I became a messenger. Oh. Sheesh. I don't get to talk about this very often. Can't you at least pretend to be a little interested? Nope. Sounds like a pain. But if you're the messenger here, how come I haven't seen you leave this place? Of course you haven't. You know how stuff... Uh, how shut off we are. I've been outside the shop, but no one's ever had anything for me to mail. From the day I became a messenger to this very day, you're the only person who still had contact with this place after you left. And since I've got absolutely nothing to do, I've been trading things I buy from nearby cities to make a quick buck. And before you know it, I'm everybody's favorite shopkeeper, Inam. How about that? I never knew. With how you used to be, I'd be more surprised if you did. But well, even though I gave up and uh, grew up in the city, I definitely prefer living here. It's simple and laid back. What's not to like? You don't really seem all that different from the other Liberi here either. I'll take that as a compliment. Anyway, what are you doing here? Let me ask you this first. What was Aus doing here? You didn't bring them here, did you? Aus? Of course not. Even someone like me, who hardly follows that kind of stuff, knows about them. I don't have that kind of pull. In fact, I was probably more surprised than anybody else when I saw them. They really were just passing by and I was their interpreter while they were here. Oh, I could talk about them all day. You came all you came at just the right time. I wasn't even sure how to brag about this when nobody here knows who they are. Check this out. I got this autographed album. Eh, I'll pass. I'm not a fan anyway. I just thought it was weird. Uh, Gavion, you've been out there so long, but your taste is just as terrible as ever. You wanna get your ass whooped? Whatever. The doctor and I are on our way to the mamas, and we figured we'd stop by and resupply here. Alright, we could just barter like everyone here does, but since you know how things work on the outside, you can pay me with cold hard cash. Oh, wait up, I almost forgot since you were bombarding me with all these questions. I was actually looking for you for something too. Huh. Do you have a friend called Croissant? Croissant? Yeah, she's with us. We've been trying to find her. Have you seen her? You should take a look over at the market. Come on, come all! Freshly carved wood sculptures right here! Check out these ores passed down from my grandfather. Forge weapons sharper than anything you've ever seen. The market's not half bad. <laughs> I was the one who taught them to paddle like that. It's something, isn't it? Look, there's croissant. In the corner of the market, Croissant is in a fierce standoff against a lower, lone Arcasoria. Croissant gestures towards the ore her opponent is holding, and then points to the seashell in her hand. She shakes... Uh, he shakes his head. She frowns and waves her hand with a reluctant look. She takes a rock out of her pocket and points at her seashell again. Then she points at the ore in his hand once more. He ponders for a moment and nods. Throughout the entire transaction, Croissant's, uh, Croissant maintains a bitter expression, but the moment her trade partner turns around, her face immediately lights up with a bright smile. Ooh-wee! That's a hell of an ore! What a prize! Croissant, what are you doing? Bartering here? Gabriel, boss! Finally! Took me ages to find y'all! You doing okay? 
never been better. I came across her a couple of days ago. I could tell she's not from around here, so I brought her with me. This girl really knows how to do business. She doesn't speak their language, but she really knows how to speak the language of trade with my men here. I can see that. Croissant, have you come across anyone else? Nah, and I asked Inam too, but she says she ain't heard nothing about that either. Alright, at least you're alive and well. Now we just gotta find Otaga and Blaze. I'm not too worried about Blaze. She jumped out of the aircraft first, didn't think twice. As for Otage. Inam, bad news! There's a group of Orcasoria charging towards us! What? Which tribe is it? Are they out of their minds? Looks like the Great Wood Tribe, but they're being led by some freak with a sword. Huh? A freak? What's that about? My man says a freak with a blade is charging towards us with a horde of Orcasoria. What gives? Hold up! A f freak carrying a blade? Damn, take a bit. It's gonna be Otage. Is she with you guys? In any case, it looks like they're here already. Gavil and you with the hood. Come and help us. Oh, I'm coming with y'all. Come on, dudes. Let's go. I mean, it's not like any of you know what I'm saying, but... Show them what you've got. <laughs> I wasn't sure about this at first, but it's kind of fun taking these guys around to fight. Hey, Utage, are you out of your mind? What are you even doing? Oh, it's Kaviel. Croissant and Doctor too. Hi, yes. Who's saying, yeah? Uh, what are you attacking the village? Why are you attacking the village? And where do you get these guys? Huh? Is this your hometown? Alright, I'll knock it off. Get these fellas to knock it off too. Uh, but you know, they don't understand a word I say. Looks like we're out of options. Let's take these idiots down. Alright, so why did you charge this place with those Arcasoria again? Well, I saw a village here and I just thought it'd be fun to start a fight. <laughs> I guess that's our Otage. You're like a whole nother gal in a fight. Uh, I'm sorry. Well, how did you even manage to run up these guys without speaking their language? Honestly, I don't really know. Flashback. Uh, my nails are ruined. I'm so pissed. And just where the hell did my nail kit go? Now I'm twice as pissed. And I'm hella gross and sweaty after that fight. Plus, the air here is so humid, my clothes are totally soaked. Now I'm three times as pissed. And I'm, like, just walking around. Why do these Arcasoria people keep coming up to me picking fights? Now I'm four times as pissed. And I only tagged along because I heard this would be a nice place for a vacation. This is only not a vacation spot. Hmm? Is someone sneaking up on me? Are those... Arcasaria? Then I bit them all... Uh, then I bit up all the sneaky dudes. And then some more of them came, so I beat all of them up. And somehow they all started to, like, worship me for some reason. Oh, I see. They probably thought you were some kind of exotic animal. After all, no one from around here looks like you. Uh, huh? Are you blind? How do they mistake a cutie like me for an animal? Um, well, to tell you the truth, you probably do look kind of like a freak to the Arcosoria. Also, I spotted the Great Wood Tribe's leader among your people, so I asked him. Apparently, you're their leader now. I'm... I'm what? Basically, you defeated the tribe's leader, and they're following you around because you look up... because they look up to you as their leader now. Huh? They don't even understand a word I'm saying. I thought they were just taking along for fun. That's what happens when you're strong enough here. What should I do, Doctor? I don't know. Might as well stick around and lead them. Uh, I don't wanna. Life without TV and AC? You might as well just kill me. 
Whatever, we found you and Croissant. Now we just need to look for Blaze. Blaze is probably fine. I can't imagine anything slowing her down. Me neither. Oh yeah, boss. What's the plan now? We're going to the temple for the ceremony Gawi was talking about? Oh, right, you haven't heard yet, Doctor. Why don't you tell them? The Doctor proceeds to explain the situation to Otaga and Croissant. Aha. Uh -huh. Alright then, so we're gonna be looking for this uh, Zumama to get your engine back. That's right. Uh, you mean the ceremony's over already? Yep. Then what did I even come here for? Whatever, it doesn't sound like something I'd care about anyway. Also, Gabriel, I thought you said this was a vacation spot. Huh? You don't think this, is, this place is great? Well, actually, I guess... Mm, yeah, it's great. But, like, nothing here screams vacation. What screams vacation to you? Like beaches, oceans, parasols, and ice cream. I even got myself a new swimsuit. I've been wearing it underneath my outfit since before we left. Eh, and here I tagged along just cause I got nothing else to do. Uh, I never said anything... I never said there's anything like that around here. Didn't you say we were gonna play in the water? Well, yeah, that we can do. There's a huge waterfall deep in the no rainforest. And since we're heading to Zimama's tribe, we'll pass by the waterfall for sure. Hell, I brought my swimsuit too. I just haven't taken it out yet. Really? Awesome. Well, it looks like you found who you're looking for. Yeah, you know, thanks to you. No problem. Oh, I just remembered. Where's the Mimi? I thought she was supposed to be with you guys. No idea. I think she had something else to take care of. We'll group up with her later. Alright. Bring her these books then, will you? What do we have here? City Beauty. Mastering Corporate Management in 100 Days. How to become a fashion expert. <laughs> these are some weird titles. She's been learning Sargonian and what life in the outside world is like. After I taught her the basics, of course. Hmm. I can't imagine these books help much with her Sargonian. You're right, but that's really how she learned it. Letter by letter, word by word. It may not be the best material to learn from, but it was more painful to see her not having a clue where to start. That's also why I decided to teach her Sargonian. You know, Gabriel, she's really working hard to get to where you are. You don't need to tell me. I know. But, well, I don't know that much about what it's like outside either. Besides, I can only bring so many books with me. So I don't really know whether she's learning anything useful from them. <laughs> no wonder there's always something weird about her. Hang on, don't tell me you're the one who taught the mama Sargonian too. Nope. Pretty curious about that myself. She did have me find her books and machinery, but it's but it was like she's she just picked up Sargonian out of nowhere. And she's even teaching it to her tribe. Doctor, what do you think? She's quite ambitious. You think so too, huh? Huh? There ain't nothing ro uh, wrong with her teaching Sargonian. If the people here could talk uh, with folks out there, they'd be... they'd live a lot better. Maybe. The way I think about it, compared to your supposedly much better lives, I think our way of life out here is satisfying enough. I don't think your city folks would understand, though. That's so. Uh, I think I get it. I mean, I lived in the countryside back, back in Higashi, too. Huh? I took you for a city girl. Uh, what with how trendy you are. Nope, this is just the kind of stuff I like. <sighs> I'm tired. Time for a nap. 
Here at our tribe, anything we leave out for trade. If someone ca if something catches your eye, have Kabi will translate for you. Uh, wait. Hmm? I've got a favor to ask you too. Alright, and let's continue on to stage number 6, titled Encounter. Encounters always come unexpectedly. Hi priest, how's it looking? I have to say, that cannon was so astoundingly loud I almost got blown out of the thing when it fired. I'm asking about the big ugly thing. I was just sharing my personal situation with you. It went exactly as we expected. Firing the cannon in succession caused it to overheat. But it went very well. Yes, I have to say, it was very effective. Despite the fact that it gave me quite a scare. In any case, we will have to fix it up after we get back. Yeah, the ceremony happened way too quickly. The big ugly wasn't ready yet. I was hoping to wait until we finished it before talking to the other tribes about the ceremony, but they'd already gone ahead with it. It's okay, it all turned out fine. I still remember how shocked everyone was when they first saw the big ugly thing. <laughs> that was so funny. Yeah, we've accomplished our goal. This will set in motion a new order, a new era. Yes, an age of machines. That has such a nice ring to it. What do you think of the Age of Big Ugly? Or maybe the Age of the High Priest? Yes, that sounds almost as cool as I do! Let's just call it the Age of Machines. Ish, you have a lot going on for you, but you're still behind the times. Now what you, now that you've learned what it's like on the outside, you should try to expand your horizons. Here, check out my outfit. Don't you think it's, it's trendy? Looks smart. You're so short, I can't even see it. What does trendy mean, anyway? Uh, never mind, my mistake. I shouldn't have brought this up. But no matter. I'll pick out some clothes befitting you, our next great chief. I don't mind how I dress. Anyway, I just got word from the tribesmen who stayed behind. They managed to steal an engine. What? Really? Yes, apparently they got it from the transport gavel we used to get here. Wonderful! I can wait to take a good look at it. Oh, come to think of it, I can go and check it out right now. I'll see you later. <laughs> the High Priest the same as ever. Hey, it was Ali Berry talking to the leader. What, you new here? That's the High Priest. You know, the Big Ugly's pilot. What? I want to pilot the Big Ugly. Give it up. Before it was finished, that thing used to explode just about every day. So many hands got caught up in the explosions. In the end, no one wanted to pilot it. Then the High Priest came along, and he somehow managed to come back alive every time it blew up. No kidding. Isn't that good? Yeah, I've got an idea what tribe he's from, but we all call him the High Priest now. Hmm. Isn't that Yogi over there? Hey, Yogi! Oh, it's you two. I thought you were taking care of your brother. Where is he? Actually, I'm going to the leader to talk about that. Yo, idiot, she's the Great Chief now. Oh, I'm going to the Great Chief. What's the matter? Great Chief, my brother has caught the stone disease. Speak Sargonian. Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm not very good at speaking it yet. How did he catch the disease? He wanted to mine ores and went deeper into the mine. He didn't even listen to me when I told him not to. That idiot. Didn't I tell you to stay away from the mine's depths? Where is he now? Gavil took him away for treatment. Gavil? Yes, it looks like Gavil actually became a doctor. My brother was in a lot of pain, but he seemed much better after she patched him up a bit. So she really meant it when she said she's a doctor now? She wanted me to pass along a message to. What is it? She said she was coming for you. She looked angry. Huh, I bet she's just upset our leader defeated her. That's right, leader. What you did back there, that boom, that was amazing. You didn't call her great chief. You didn't either. 
Get off my back, you moron. She'll always be our tribe leader. Why don't you get off my back? I just can't... I just haven't gotten used to calling her that yet. Gavil isn't like that. Great chief, I trust Gavil. Yes, I trust her too. Your brother will be fine. Where is he? At Tomimi's tribe. Tomimi's. You should go get your brother later. Understood. I'm certain Gavi is here to get her engine back. She'll have to go through me to get it. I'll admit that Gavi is strong, but she thinks her fists are everything. She's wrong. If she's here for her engine, then I'll give her another taste of the big ugly's might. But I won't give it back to her. This engine is very important to our tribe. No, our future. Did you just mention Gaviel? Flint, did you hear that? Why don't you cry in your bed some more about the Great Chief? And why don't you go home to your mama and have her teach you what to call the Great Chief? Knock it off, you two. Ah. You... Kimar? You don't want her to come, do you? If she comes, I'll defeat her. So you don't want her in here, then I'll stop her. Very well. I'll be going then. Back already? Um, where is Gabriel? Meanwhile, this rainforest is way too humid. I barely hiked half a day and I'm already drenched in sweat, and I haven't seen a soul in the two days I've been here. Thank goodness I wore my swimsuit underneath. What a lifesaver. I'm really getting my money's worth with it. Really, though, even though I climbed the trees here, all I can see is more trees. Just where's the ceremony Gary was talking about? Hey, is anyone here? Hey, Gabriel, your tail's tiny. Hey, doctor, maybe it's time for you to change that hood of yours. They aren't within earshot. If something happens to the doctor, what am I supposed to tell Amia? I guess I should worry about Gab. Shouldn't worry since Gabriel said she'd take care of the doctor, but I'm not sure that's all that reassuring knowing her. Uh, the more I think about it, the more worried I am. Maybe I should try knocking down a few trees to make some noise. According to Yogi, I should find Gabriel if I go this direction. Whoa, finally! A person! Hey there! I haven't seen clothes like that before. Who are you? Huh? What are you saying? You don't understand me. Is this for real? Camille didn't tell me people here speak a different language. But it looks like you can hold your own in a fight. Hey, come on! Is this how you people treat visitors? Just as I thought, you're strong. Before I take Gabriel down, I'll have some fun with you first. Hmm? Did she just say Gabriel? Whatever, I'm in a pretty bad mood right now. If you want to fight, then bring it on. Where are the others? The people of the Great Wood Tribe are gone. I heard that leader was defeated by an outsider. The Fire Stone and Thick Tail tribes were defeated by a stranger carrying a pile of weapons on her back. Some of the tribe decided to join up with Zumama. The truth is, Zumama managed to drum up a formidable front. If I weren't with Gaviel, I might have gone with Zumama myself. Doesn't matter. Your tribes will be enough. Hey, can we really challenge Zumama on our own? Yes. Gabriel can definitely beat Zumama's giant machine. Then I will become the great chief and force Gabriel to stay. Peter thinks this is not a good idea. <laughs> but 
but this is the only way to make her stay. Don't forget why we formed Gabriel's Will. Gabriel's Will is not, is not just a tribe. It is an alliance dedicated to the vis vision of Gabriel as the Great Chief. I agree with Tomimi. I only recognize Gabriel as the Great Chief. That's right, Gabriel should be the one to lead us. Huh. If I disagree, I wouldn't be here either. Peter doesn't like it, but Peter will follow. Alright. You head over to Zimama's tribe and wait outside for me, got it? The other clan leaders, all unanimously, yes. Right. This is all for Gabriel. And the other clan leaders, once again, all for Gaviel, unanimously cheering. Doctor, everyone, great, I finally found you guys. <sighs> Doctor, you had me worried. Huh? Blaze, why are you wearing your swimsuit and carrying some kid on your back? I ran into this little girl on my way over here. She started hitting me for some reason. I kicked her ass, of course, and beat down all her friends, too. Gotta hand it to her, she's not bad in a fight. Didn't go down easy, so I brought her along. I figured you could help me ask why she wanted to fight me. It's Kimar. She's probably just thought you looked strong. She just loves fighting. Huh, that means something coming from you. I don't love fighting, I'm just a hands-on problem solver. Whatever. <laughs> Where am I? Morning, Kimar. Uh, Gavil, uh, what are you doing here? You bumped into my friend, fought her, and lost. Huh, welcome back, kid. Uh, hey, Gavil, what's she doing? What's with the bowing? Kimar, what gives? I felt a... Uh, Greater strength from her than anyth anything I've ever felt from Zumama. I'm not interested in you anymore, Kavion. Looks like you can talk to her, so please ask her to teach me. Oh, she wants you to teach her. Um, wh what? I guess she thinks you're strong, so she wants to become your disciple or something. Uh, uh, doctor, what do I do? I've never been in a situation like this before. Well, it's up to you. How about we just uh, let her follow us for now? Sure. Hey, Kimar, come with us. Okay. But call me Flint. Come to think of it, what happened to the ceremony? Doctor, why don't you explain it to Blaze? Blah, 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 blah. She let her people get a rip of feed just to build her machines. I won't stand by and let that happen. What are we waiting for, Doctor? Let's go! Wait... We still got somewhere to be. Huh? Alright then, and we continue on to stage SD-2, titled Momentary Rest. A waterfall has water, and an ocean has water. What difference does it make where you decide to fool around? Lancer 2, I have a serious question. Go ahead. Is your battery running low? Oh, don't worry about that. Before we left, the lovely Miss Closure fitted me with a brand new extra long lasting battery. Theoretically, I could function for a week without needing a charge. The aircraft is also carrying spare batteries, so you don't have to worry about me. Okay. Now, where did Kay run off to? On her way back, the kiddo suddenly hopped to her feet and jutted away. It's true, we should be concerned about Kobe's condition, but considering her strength and constitution, we don't need to be too concerned. That's true. <sighs> I'm bored. I fixed up the aircraft, patched up the wounded that Gavil sent over, and now we've got nothing to do. That we can't speak the local language is just a cherry on top. I should have gone to the ceremony with the doctor. The aircraft is an important Rhode Island asset. It's our responsibility to guard it well. 
I'm just saying. I mean, I'm a pilot. I know the deal with the aircraft. You're lucky, Lancer, too. You can just switch into sleep mode when you're bored. I was out for 12 hours yesterday, so I'm wide awake. Well, actually, I have no ability to feel boredom. Although I do understand what this feeling is, Mr. Dillon. The lovely Miss Closure complains about these fe these things a lot, and it causes her to behave in strange ways. I think about this sometimes, Lancet too. Are we totally sure you and the other bots don't have a human crammed up in there anywhere? We don't. My interior is a precisely designed circuitry construct. Do you want to see? Although, since I have been programmed with a female personality, I may act out in unexpected ways when presenting my body to the opposite sex. Uh, I'll pass. If I was going to see anything, I'd definitely prefer a swims swimsuit at a time like this. A swimsuit? Yeah, it's summertime. That's when you put on a swimsuit and go and play in the water. In any case, I'll play an audio recording of various sea sounds for you. No thanks, it'll only make me feel worse. Then maybe Mr. Dinner would like to see me in a swimsuit? Definitely not. Oh, sorry, I'm only a robot after all. Ah, uh, I'm, I'm the one who's sorry, I didn't mean it like that. Don't worry about it. By the way, have you seen the sea, Mr. Dillon? Um, I have. I'm thinking it was that time we loaned Mr. Silver Ash an aircraft last summer after a schedule change mixed things up. I flew him there. It turns out the place was a major vacation spot. Master Silver Ash made me a VIP guest. Man, that's when I realized how us poor folks could scarcely imagine what the rich, rich uh, live like. Here. I've got the pictures with me. You long for this kind of life, Mr. Dillon? Hmm? I mean, that was a really great couple of days. But if my whole life was like that, I don't think I'd ever get used to it. I'm more of an instant noodles in the cockpit kind of guy, with an inverted sleep schedule to boot. Oh, you can't do that. Let me formulate a healthy lifestyle plan for you. No thanks, I'm good. Too bad. The lovely Miss Closure created this f uh, feature for me, but no one uses it. Not her, not the doctor. <laughs> Sounds about right. Oh, but that reminds me. The tribes here live so much better than I thought. They really want for nothing. Yes, life here is less convenient and comfortable than the world we know, but not to any significant degree. According to my records, your health has improved in the past two days. Really? Really. Turns out returning to nature will do that for you. Huh. I guess this is the life that everyone came for. Oh yeah, I just remembered. Gamiel said something about a gigantic waterfall in the rainforest that way. I'd love to get go there when the doctor gets back. They may have already gone that way. The doctor is a good boss. I know our friends wouldn't abandon us to go and play under under the waterfall. No one tell him. No one tell him. True. Then let's wait patiently. Is there a Dylan here? That's me. Huh? You uh, speak Sargonian. Yes, and you're here with the machine. Right, it must be you. The one called Doctor asked me to give you this note. Hmm? Let me see here. Hmm. Lancet 2, looks like we've got work to do. Meanwhile, at the waterfall. Wow, I could hear the roar of the water from so far away. I never knew waterfalls even got this big. Huh, I didn't, I didn't steer you wrong, did I? Now, for people who might never heard about this or were never made aware, this Gaviel skin or redesign or sprite never became a skin. I am still surprised by that. Anyway. Sure enough, I guess I'll forgive you. <laughs> it really is an incredible waterfall. Looks like the Mimi isn't here yet. 
So let's take a, a little break. Hooray, I can finally get some use out of my swimsuit. <laughs> You've got a lot of fighting you, Squirt. <laughs> Gimar, well aware of the language barrier, communicates with her stance rather than words. Huh. Seeing as I've got nothing else to do, we might as well go for a few rounds. Blaze is really going at it hard with the girl over there. Sure is. Kind of see what's so fun about fighting. I heard you sing a whole nother tune the last time you was fighting on Utage. <laughs> I guess you're right. Hey, Croissant, that isn't a swimsuit, is it? <laughs> you got me. It's just some outdoors you get up I snagged. Plenty waterproof, so we ain't pretending it's a swimsuit. You're a real function over over form kind of girl, huh? But hey, you know, it may not be a beach, but playing around the waterfall is pretty great too. It's got the real back to nature vibe. Too bad I didn't bring my camera. You got that right. I ain't never been out in the wilds like this before. I, I'm having a ball. Hey, what's that? Am I seeing things? Huh? Isn't that Kay? How do you like the waterfall, Doctor? It's pretty nice. Huh, I used to love coming here to bathe. From here, it's just a short walk to Zumama's tribe. When I got uh, that letter from Tamimi, I never thought things would turn out like this. Oh, Doctor, there's one thing that's been really gnawing at my brain these past few days. We're friends, right? I wanna ask you about it. Do you think... Doctor... What's happening? I'm trying to talk to the doctor here. Look over there. Is that... Kay? I found it! The mushroom sea! Bay time! Looks like she's still on off in La La Land. But she's just so cute running all around in the water like that. Ah, that stupid kid. How about we just let her play uh, play for a while? Anyway, Doctor, what I wanted to ask was... Do you think my tail has gotten fatter? I did not notice. <sighs> I knew I shouldn't have asked you. You don't know, Tamimi's tail wasn't always that fat, and I don't want mine to end up like hers. Um, anyway, what do you think about Zumama? Huh? What do I think about her? I guess I think she's real tough, and she can make a hell of a machine. Gabriel! There's Tamimi. You've, do you've done with the thing. Yes. Hmm? B what You're a cutie. Gabriel, I, I never knew you had a friend like this. I thought you just hung around with other muscle-headed lungs like you. That was uncalled for. She's got perfect skin, refined features, and a gothy out outfit that really goes with her complexion. Gothy? Is that in? Well, no, but it's popular with a certain crowd. I picked it up from a magazine. They said it's how they dress in the outside world. Oh no, girl, honey. You've got a certain... Uh, you've got a critically flawed understanding of fashion here. But that's okay. I mean, look at this place. I totally get why you'd come up with something like that. But don't worry. You just let Big Sister Utage feel you with her bottomless, extra-thick fashion wisdom. Gabriel, I'm borrowing her. Uh, what, 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 what? Sure, knock yourself out. Anyway, we're all here. I'll see if I can get Kay to sober up. Break time's over. Kay's back in the fight. Gabriel, she's making a break for it again. What? Everybody, get your clothes on. We're going after her. 
that direction. It's the way to Zimama's tribe. Hold on. Did you really change that fast? Wait up. Why bother changing? Just go. Alright, and this will be our finale for the story today, but we are of course not fully done. It's time to check out today's uh, character full file and voice file to introduce another one from this story. So, let's head on over. Alright, and here we are at Unectus' full file and voice files. As a quick reminder, the character only has a Japanese and uh, Chinese Mandarin uh, voice actor, so we will be using the Japanese one for this uh, for this example. So you will have to pay attention to see what the character is saying, unless you actually speak Japanese, then it's <laughs> then it's gonna be fine for you. But anyway, let's uh, begin with the full file. Basic info: Codename Unectus, gender female, combat experience none, place of birth Sargon, date of birth October 30th, race Pythia. Height 171 centimeters and infection status confirmed infected by medical examination. Physical exam. Physical strength excellent, mobility standard, physical resilience excellent, technical acumen normal, combat skill standard, and originium arts assimilation standard. Profile. The leader of a certain tribe that resides in Akahuala, Gawiel's hometown. She was admitted into Rhode Island after passing the operator examination and began receiving treatment at the same time. Her physical qualities are no less impressive than Gaviel's, currently active in the battlefields with her trusted companion, the Raging Ironhide. Clinical analysis. Imaging tests have shown the outlines of her internal organs to be indistinct due to abnormal shadows. Originium granules have been detected in her circulatory system, confirming her to be infected with aripathy. Cell originium assimilation 7%. Small traces of infection are visible on the surface of the body. Blood originium crystal density 0.22 units per liter. Operator Unectus was infected at a relatively early age, and her condition is somewhat severe as it was never really kept in check. However, thanks to her excellent physical condition, the spread of the disease in her body has slowed down by a considerable degree, and it has further stabilized after receiving treatment. Further observation and regular treatment are required. Well, look what we have here. Your body's pretty well built. Signed by Galio. Archive file number one. Unectus is a Pythian girl whose interests can be described as somewhat peculiar. She isn't the type to actively raise conversations, nor is she the kind of person to keep quiet to herself. In many ways, her views and ideologies are much more normal compared to Gaviel, who'd left home years ago but she can be pretty stubborn when it comes to all matters machinery related. When she first joined Rhode Island, for a period of time she opted to use her real name Zumama as her codename just as Tomimi before her did. However, when Closure uh, christened the newly uh, rebuilt Big Ugly, the Raging Ironhide, she took the opportunity to give herself a new codename based on her tribe's name, Unectus. That being said, a sizable number of our operators, such as Gaviel, still, still call her by her name. Based on her own personal account, she rarely ever picks fights with anyone, her frequent bouts with Gaviel during their childhood, childhoods notwithstanding. As such, this will not be accounted for in her combat experience evaluation. Archive file number 2. According to Unectus' own personal account, her knowledge of anything not related to her tribe can be attributed entirely to her book collection. This explains how, even though she was uh, able to hit it off with Closure the moment she joined the engineering department, though just as quickly she made Closure so mad that she threw the bag of chips in her head, hands, her common sense and knowledge about our day-to-day -day lives are peculiar to say the least. Nonetheless, how she was able to pick up foreign languages and robotics just by flipping through a few books goes to show her learning ability is remarkable. Not long after joining Rhode Island, she further demonstrated this impressive ability. After just a few months, Closure personally approved her request to be assigned to the engineering department. Sadly, even though she was able to learn how to operate all sorts of machinery in no time, to this day she 
she has shown no noticeable improvements when it comes to life outside her tribe. Archive file number 3. After Eunectus joined Rhode Island, she has become somewhat of a laughingstock, thanks to her lack of understanding regarding anything she is unfamiliar with. And the funniest thing about her has to be her relationship with Lancet too. The sight of Eunectus calling Lancet to her sister never fails to catch operators oblivious to this relationship by surprise. Of course, Lancet 2 is fairly popular among operators thanks to her personality, but Eunectus' passion for her is on another level. It isn't hard to fathom why, of course. Most of us have probably been so awestruck by something we've never so much as heard of that it sent chills down our spines at some point in our lives. The kind of moment that feels as though you flung open a whole new door, like discovering new untrodden lands. To Eunectus, that moment came as a child when she witnessed a nomadic city just passing through by chance. The gigantic machine, colored in its icy machinery colors, struck her with amazement like never before. That moment came again when she first heard Lancet 2 talk. This time it was the possibilities that robotics has that struck her with amazement. Wouldn't most operators be just as surprised when they first come across operation platforms that talk? The difference here is that most operators aren't all that interested in robots and therefore don't react the same way Unectus does. On the other hand, while Unectus shows extraordinary respect to other operators, operation platforms as well, Lanza 2 in, is particularly dear to her. This is actually a glimpse of her normalcy. Her special treatment for Lanza 2 can be described as ritualistic and as a sort of emotional sustenance. This is a beacon she picked for herself in her new life, and it can even be seen as the manifestation of what she has always dreamt of achieving, her, achieving herself. Which is why, even though she's the developer of all the operation platforms and the person that Eunectus has come to look up to as her master, Clojure has never tried to put a stop to her so-called stupid apprentice's behavior. She probably knows exactly how Eunectus feels. Archive file number 4. Although the doctor's trip to Akohuala had a happy, almost comedic ending, there is still a point worthy of discussion. Even though Eunectus' true goal has always been to build gigantic robots and nothing more, had this series of events not transpired, she would have become the great chieftain. And under the rule, the Akahualan tribes would likely advance into a stage, a strange but nonetheless robotic era. But its very, but its very essence by its very essence, it's an idea that runs against their traditions, a breakthrough. From this point of view, you could say Gaviel was the manifestation of tradition itself. She believed in her own strength and didn't seek any outside help. Having abided by this principle for years, this has become one of the most iconic examples of Akuhualan tradition. In other words, by its very essence, this series of events can be seen as a conflict between traditions and breakthroughs. If it wasn't for Gavil's relationship with Eunectus, if it wasn't for the region's lax sense of tradition to begin with, and how modest the Akahualan people were, history tells us all this would have ended very badly. Of course, that is simple conjecture. And this isn't to say that we were lucky things turned out the way they did. Rather, I wanted to pose an interesting question. If Gaviel and Eunectus each represented a different lifestyle, Gaviel's being the primitive yet free lifestyle while Eunectus's represented a more orderly lifestyle that relied upon tools, would we be able to say for sure that one is more correct and would lead to a better life? To take this question one step further, what makes a good lifestyle? There isn't a single correct answer to this question. But if you look at how Gaviel and Eunectus are such polar opposites yet alike in some ways, I believe this would be an interesting question to ponder. Promotion record. Eunectus's partner isn't actually the unit that the Doctor's team encountered in the rainforest. That unit was called the Big Ugly Thing. With its enormous size, the Big Ugly wouldn't have fit in or uh, wouldn't have fit in our aircrafts, and it ended up being destroyed anyway. As such, we only brought with us a small number of its spare parts on the way back. The unit we have now is a brand new unit that the whole engineering department worked uh, together to rebuild. The chief, engineering, the chief engineer named it the Raging Ironhide. 
On the outside, this new unit isn't all that different from its predecessor. Inside, however, it couldn't be more different from the haphazardly put together Big Ugly. It was the fruit of the whole engineering department putting their heads together. And supposedly, Eunectus broke down in tears at the workshop when it was finally completed. To her, it was probably the most concrete step she has ever taken to make her dream a reality. Aside from this, uh, after the Raging Ironhide was completed, the High Priest, who Eunectus has occasionally mentioned as the Big Ugly's pilot, has started popping up frequently here in Rhode Island. Dr. Kaltzid has told the operators to pay it no mind. That kind of that kind of bothered me at first, but thanks to the High Priest's happy-go-lucky personality, it didn't take long for everyone to get used to having it around. Alright, and now we go to the voice files, which means I will shut up and I will let Eunectus talk. So, I will see you guys in a bit. ここでは床で寝るのは禁止。では通路に天と張ろう。それもダメ。なぜだ。部族にいた頃は疲れたらその辺で寝ていたものだが。ドクター、なぜ私のランセット 2 ドクター。ガビルのような医者は ロドスには つまりドクターというのは大族長と同じように豊富な知識を持つ者に対する継承だな。では私がここで多くの知識を学べば、皆も私をドクターズーママと呼んでくれるのだろう。何そうはならないだと。ドクター。本当はお前の時間がある時に
すべて倒せばよいのだないつでも行ける私に行かせてもらおう私に合わせる者がいれば効率が上がるここを守るのかふん<笑>たやすいお前たちはガビルには及ばない私の力も弱くはないどんな獲物相手でも全力で行く噛みついたぞ大収穫だなガビルにはまだ少し及ばないな私が追う気にするな私もガビルには何度もやられている恥じることはないランセット通念様はどこだんどうすればドクターのように博学になれるんだアークナイツドクターちょうど教えてほしいことがあったんだ Alright and that would be it for today I swear her voice file can literally be summarized to two things Lanza 2 and Gaviel. And the occasional high priest in there. Anyway, uh, like I said, this will be it for today. Next time we shall finish off the story and include Tomimi's file uh, as the final of the three to introduce here together with the story that includes them, of course. Of course, there are more operators in there like uh, Utage that we've seen in today's part and stuff like that, but. Uh, that, that is a lot of files, and uh, sadly some of these operators are not uh, promoted yet, so I don't have the entire file available uh, for them. But anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this part today. If you did, please consider leaving a like on the video. The, the, they help me a lot in the algorithm, so thank you very much. And of course, if you're new to the channel and uh, are looking for more, well, there is a lot more, so consider subscribing. You might find some other story that you might enjoy listening and watching, and I always cover the newest stuff when it starts coming out. And of course, if you want to directly support me and my work, there are memberships as well. And uh, of course, like always, no video will be behind a membership paywall. Uh, they're purely there just to support me and the channel uh, all together. So thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you have a fantastic day wherever you are. And I will see you in the next one. Until then, bye-bye.